Hey Bible readers, it's Thursday, August 13th. We're reading from Exodus chapters 14, 15, and 16, and Matthew chapters 11 and 12. Uh, I'm going to start with Matthew today, because a lot of times uh, I, don't, I don't get into the gospel as much as I want to. And I just wanted to share, because um, there's a, a number of pieces here to concern ourselves with. The first is uh, in chapter 11. The theological assumption of Matthew chapter 11 is that the miracles of Jesus are not intended merely as displays, but rather demanded the response of repentance in the face of the coming kingdom of God. You know, these, these, this woe to unrepentant cities, uh, as is the title in my Bible. Um, these aren't, as it says, it's not just for entertainment that Jesus does these things. It's not just for people to go, wow, how about that? There is a response uh, expected from or, or sought from these actions of Jesus. Um, and then when we get into the next little saying that's in uh, Matthew, more than a wisdom teacher, though Jesus is that, Jesus is son of the Father. Whoever knows him knows the Father, which is the highest form of wisdom. The recipients of this revelation are not necessarily going to be the professional sages but rather maybe the marginal babes, babies, to such as offered the promise of rest. And that is to say, don't only look to the people who have authority or who are already looked up to uh, as being wise people. It may be that those on the margins know better, uh, have greater insight into true wisdom uh, and who Jesus truly is. And then... Um, I thought I'd read about this last part uh, at length. The framework of the Jewish debate about Sabbath. I think this is an interesting uh, way to look at this as a Christian. What one may or may not do on Sabbath. The Jewish understanding was narrow. What Christians are in the unfortunate habit of calling legalistic. The narrowness of the debate in Matthew's time ought not to obscure the fact that Jews by and large enjoyed the Sabbath as a time of prayer and rest. While it is problematic to equate the Jewish Sabbath and our Christian Sunday and to surround Sunday with Sabbath regulations, at least the Christian day of prayer and rest should have reference to Jesus as Lord of the Sabbath, and whatever works we do should be measured by the criterion of doing good. So although we need not be legalistic as Sabbath to Judaism can be, Maybe there should be some standard for Christians, and I like the standard. Is what we do on Sunday good? Um, remembering that Jesus is Lord of this Sabbath. The other, um, the other texts from Exodus um, get into the water being sweetened, the manna, the quail. We're starting to follow uh, this narrative out from the Exodus itself, the Exodus event, the salvation event. And now we move into uh, what happens next, which is an interesting, it's an interesting story, isn't it? As complaints are being made um, and, and more. Um, initially, what Exodus wants to get across is an answer to how did this happen? How did the Israelites make their way out? And Exodus wants to be very clear. Um, God did this. One cannot proceed by seeking to explain uh, the miracles that are happening, like the water being sweetened, for example. This text is not an argument, but a witness and a summons. It is a witness to the power of God and a consequent summons to faith. That may be as important as anything we need to know about what is the author trying to evoke in, in this narrative in Exodus? Bottom line is, there, this is not an argument. It is a witness. The author is not trying to explain how. The author is trying to say what happened. And that is God is making things happen. I am one with my God. My God is with us, all of us, at all times and in all places.